Alrighty guys, welcome to another episode with Handyman Dan. On today's episode, we have a coolant leak. So as you can see, we are below the max line, just there. Um, it's, it's just below there, and then when the van's running, it's perfectly on that max line. But um, on our big trip back across, coming back to SA, I was keeping an eye on it, and I noticed that it had dropped. And so I was trying to work out where that had happened from. And the other day, see if we can get in there. The other day, when I was inspecting everything, as you can see right there, you can see a little bit of a red tinge. Try and get this right in there for you. See, you can see the red around that. So that was that's what's causing the problem. That junction there is leaking. That runs off to the heater core. Um, and the other day, when it was a little bit cooler, we turned the heater on, and we weren't getting any heat. So we will replace this, pull that hose off, we'll replace the clamp, we'll put a good proper clamp on, we'll do the other ones in that area as well, we'll um, yeah, put some good hose clamps on there, um, and then we'll see what we have to do to bleed the system and top up the coolant, or we may potentially have to drain the coolant completely and reinstall. See, I took that, um, I just took the cap off, only do that when it's cold. You would have heard ours hiss a little bit. Um, that's because we were driving it this morning, but I probably left it for a good, probably at least two hours by the time I um, had breakfast and then also did the oil change. So that was fine to take off. But yeah, if it's been driving recently, definitely recommend uh, leaving it for a while just to cool down so you don't spray yourself with boiling hot coolant. Just a little bit of info if you didn't know, um, you can't mix brands or types of coolant so you just need to know what coolant has previously gone in the vehicle. Um, if you can find that out that makes it way easier because you can just top up um, the amount that you need but if you don't know and you have to put in um, like a, an unknown coolant and you're mixing them, um, you need to flush the entire system of all the old coolant and then refill it up, which um, this system is 10 litres, so that's a fair bit of coolant. So it's definitely cheaper if you can ring around, make some phone calls, find out whoever's done any previous work on your vehicle, um, and then you can just use the same coolant brand that they've used. Yep, so we'll get some tools set up, we'll try and get some access in there to uh, replace this clamp. We also, while we're here, what else runs on there? There's another one. We'll probably also, we'll do that one. I'm just using a pair of pliers just to remove the hose clamp. Try and break this seal. So I'm just using a screwdriver to break the seal that's formed between the hose and then the plastic junction. Um, if you just poke a screwdriver down between them and wriggle it around a bit, it'll help break the seal and it'll make getting the hose off so much easier. So now I've pulled the hose off the junction it was connected to and now I'm just using a pair of pliers to remove the old spring hose clamp from the hose. Put this one back on and make sure to put it in a spot that's easy to, to be able to tighten it up. Yep, cool, that's that one back on there. Okay, so as you can see, we've got the new heat hose clamp on there, done that. Alright, so we're going to undo this here, which is a uh, 8 mil. So then we can hopefully move this over just to make it send this one at the backs a bit easier to get to because otherwise I definitely will not be able to get in there. So we'll undo this. Okay, we we'll just have to put a ring on the other end. What's to bet? Not an eight mil. Nope. Ten. Yep. Okay. So now we've got that out. Now I can manipulate this and be able to get to it back in there. I have to pull this hose back off the one that we just did. Pull this one back off. Try and get in here with these. Uh, they have a bit of a shorter handle. There's success after loosening that. 
I've loosened it off. I just had to try and um, loosen uh, loosen the hose clamp off as much as I could, and then just tried to like spin it around so I could spin it around so I could grab onto it from uh, through here with the pliers. But that's all sweet. So we'll pull that off and put a different hose clamp. Yep, we've got this loosened off. So we'll pull this hose off. Just poke the screwdriver in again just to try and loosen off the seal. I absolutely hate these spring-loaded ones. I think I'm not alone. All right, we'll throw this next hose clamp on. All righty, put it back together. Make sure this will rotate. That should be at a, not an amazing angle, but a better angle, so we'll be able to get that one good. And then we'll also be able to get yeah, that one will work good. And so we'll push this back on, just like that. Oh, yep. Yeah. Same with this one. Very nice. We'll remount this now. 10mm spanner and 8mm socket. Nice and tight. Now we can do up both of these heater hose clamps and we can put this breather pipe that we took off back on. So that one goes on there like that. We can do up both those heater hoses, tighten them up by hand. So you just need to get this sitting in the right spot, right where we want this to be. There'll be a ridge in the pipe so you can feel where that is. So you just want to be back from that a little bit so that spot there is fine. We'll do it up there. Okay, let's start up nice and tight. Do the next one at the back. Do this top one up. Get it there by finger tight. Get it sitting where we want it. Start up pretty, pretty firm. We'll just grab the hose and just give everything a little bit of a hose off in there just because coolant can be very corrosive. So just give everything a quick little rinse anywhere that I've been touching out here on the bull bar and stuff like that. Just on top of the turbo and stuff, we'll just give a little bit of a wash down. Just giving it a quick hose off, just kind of anywhere down here where the coolant was running. Mix up some fresh coolant and uh, we'll get it started up, get it warming up and top it up and bleed the system. So we use some demineralized water, measure it out in a beaker to get a litre, and then use this. This thing's super handy, it's got the markings, the markings on it. Just pretty much a litre of that to a litre of that, which is exactly what it says on the back. It says, mix one part Burson's Long Life Pink Coolant to one part demineralized water, 50%. So that's what we've done to the maximum line, make sure all our tools and stuff out of the way and we'll uh, start it up and let it idle and get up to temperature. This is the procedure from the manual for um, cooling system draining, filling and bleeding and so basically it goes through everything you need for if you're going to drain the complete system but for us we're just bleeding it. All we need to do is fill the coolant up in the expansion tank to the maximum mark Start the engine allowed to idle until it reaches normal operating temperature. Allow the engine to idle for a further five minutes. Switch the engine off. Allow the engine to cool and then fill it up to the max line again. And then you can install the coolant um, cap on the expansion tank and you're good to go. So we've started it up. We'll let it come to temperature. I'll just idle it a bit higher because uh, diesels take so long to warm up at idle. So we'll just... Uh, Do that for like 1500, do that for like 15 minutes and see if the temperature climbs up. So you just got uh, one of the torque wrenches in its box with a few bricks. And that's got it sitting at 1500 and then I can keep an eye on the front while that's doing its thing. Now we've come up a few degrees but uh, it's just about 43 so we'll just leave it for a bit and hopefully it uh, comes to temperature soon. So you just need to make sure to have the heater on as well, just so it's open. Just then all the coolant and stuff flows through and you get all the air out of that. 
So just bringing it up to temperature, getting ready for us to top it up. So just came in here to check to see if the heater was working. Put it on to heat, turned it on, and yeah, it's just blowing hot air. We lost the heater a week ago, maybe. So here's just a page from the manual where it shows the cycle that the thermostat opens and closes at. So that's the kind of cycle for the temperature we're aiming for. So here I'm just setting the timer for five minutes. So we'll just leave it to idle for five minutes. I'm gonna keep an eye on the coolant levels um, in this five minute period, just to make sure it doesn't drop significantly. Um, if it's still floating up around the max mark, then that's fine. If it drops a little bit, that's fine. But if you notice that the whole reservoir or something like that um, is basically empty, then you need to top it up with more coolant. Um, in that five minute period just to make sure it remains full. Okay, so we've brought it up to temperature. Now we've turned it off, and now we just need to let it cool down, see if this drops at all, and then top it up as necessary. That's pretty much it for um, bleeding and fixing this cooling system. Um, obviously, if your leak is in a different spot, then you'd have to fix a different hose or a different junction or something like that, but the principle's still the same. You just go out, get some good heater hose, get some good hose clamps the right size, take off the old ones, put the new ones on, um, and then bleed the system. So that's pretty much all um, the same as this. And yeah, I hope it gave you the confidence to tackle the job yourself. And uh, if you liked it, give it a like, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.